Erev Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. This evening, we're going to be examining a, uh, a documentary that's been put together by a couple of men called Antichrist Spirit Revealed. Documentary 2019, parable, put out by Parable of the Vineyard. There are two gentlemen that, have, uh, that are inside this video here uh, where they share their opinions and beliefs on this. Uh, and I'm just looking to see if I can uh, find this. Okay, Adam Fink is, uh, is one of the guys that's in the video here. And uh, I'm just trying to see if we have both their names on here. I don't see both the names. But nonetheless, uh, you can listen to this video yourself. Uh, I, 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 I have to tell you, I, I'm very troubled by the video. Uh, as many of you are that have written me about this video here and understandably I can see why you're troubled the Purpose as I stated already is that they're taking the name of Jesus and they're typing the name of Jesus to the mark of the beast uh, um, they've got quite a few thumbs down. Uh, grantedly, I actually did it myself because, listen, this is just not a good video. But there's a lot of people that are actually liking the video. Over 2,000 people have liked this video. Now, just imagine how many of those people also uh, agree with this doctrine. A doctrine that, to me, as they said, they were afraid that they'd be considered heretics for, for putting it out. I don't consider them necessarily heretics, but certainly misguided, uh, misdirected, and, and definitely going down a very, a very dangerous path. Uh, whether or not these guys are part of this agenda that's going on that me and Yana are battling on a daily basis, where it's to take Christians away from Jesus Christ, uh, take them down this road that puts them underneath Talmudic uh, rabbis, underneath the law, uh, I don't know if they're part of that. The Messianic ministers, many of those guys are part of that agenda. And if they're not, they just don't realize that they're, they're aimlessly wandering down that particular road. Uh, but before I even get started, let me just share with you real quick. Let's take a look though on Revelation and see how dangerous it would be to say that the name of Jesus is the mark of the beast. Uh, and, and, and maybe before I do that, let me just i got to show you why they say that. They take it from the Greek scripture uh, in the book of Revelation, which is what I have up on the screen for you here. They're going to take where he speaks about it's the number of a man, 603 score and 6 or 666. And they write that out as a word. And that word then they apply as sounding like Jesus. All right, and just quickly, just to show you that, that's in minute mark 2740 uh, is roughly where they first ex bring this part out. And again, anything can, you know, sound similar. It's just like what we have, what is it, synonyms, I guess, that sound the same but have different meanings. Well, it's not even a synonym. It's just maybe close. And granted, the letter J was not in the English language. It, was, it wasn't until the... Uh, uh, the 15th century, the letter J came into the English language. And so, all right, I get that part. But let's listen to this part real quick here. Then we're going to go back to the book of Revelation here. Try. By the way, before I, so because I know I'm not giving him a chance to explain this as of yet, those three letters, those three Greek letters you see there are, uh, this first letter, Chai, is a letter 600. Uh, and then the next letter is going to be 60. And then the next letter will be six, okay? So he's going to tell you the names of the letters, and because of the pronunciation of those letters, this is why he believes that the, the name Jesus is the mark of the beast. So let's listen to this real quick. It is pronounced chi, as in cheese. Z is pronounced Z. Okay, so the next letter is Z. First letter is chai, pronounced chi. Next letter is Z, pronounced Z. Uh, and what's kind of interesting, if you pronounce it the way he's saying it phonetically, it's not going to be the same way it would sound as if you were saying it the way he's going to, well, the way he's going to pronounce it at the end of this. Let's continue on. As in zebra, stigma is pronounced S, as in sun. Okay, so chai, the letter chai, is pronounced chi. The letter Z is pronounced Z, as in zebra. And the letter uh, stigma is pronounced S as in sun. But 
when he goes to pronounce it, Z is going to lose the Z as in zebra and sound more like, uh, well, let's just listen. Now, putting it all together, we get the false, blasphemous name, Jesus. So, Zu, like the Zu, he now he pronounces, instead of sounding like Z as in zebra, it's Z as in Zu. Zebra. Not Zu, Zu, Zu. More like a, I don't know. Anyway, you know, for one that gets me, and it's just kind of dealing with this right from the very beginning, all languages evolve. Yes, I agree. The word Jesus was not known 2,000 years ago. All right? They could have said his name Isus, as the Greek way was being spoken. And for those of you that don't believe that Greek was being spoken, I mean, granted, if we have the Hebrew Matthew, here's just one example here. The Hebrew Matthew, there's 28 manuscripts, but on, the, on Shem Tov, it uses 18 different manuscripts to put this all together. Uh, there's different variations of the way they, print, they spell his name or he pronounce his name. Uh, Yeshua is for the most part what is used in the Hebrew Matthew. The oldest manuscript they have here is I think from the uh, either the 15th or 17th century. I forget exactly which one. But in this case here, Matthew 24 verse 14, when it says, and this gospel that is Evangelii, all right, and let me take and slide you over to the Hebrew right here so you can see that. And he does it clearly right there. He puts it in quotations, okay? And it's, uh, he, he transliterates it in Hebrew. Alavavav, you have the two little dashes there. Nun gimel yod lamed yod. Okay? Ivon, okay? Ivon jelly, Ivon jelly. So clearly, and it is believed by the church fathers that there was a Hebrew version of Matthew's book. He's the only apostle from what we know of for sure that we have a record, historical record, that he actually spoke in the Hebrew, or excuse me, he wrote his gospel in the Hebrew language. That's one reason why we believe that this is more accurate. Even Nehemia Gordon, who's a Hebraic scholar, has said that the idioms within the uh, Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew are far more consistent than that of the Greek language. But, and this is just one place, but it's over and over and over, Greek terminology is used inside of the Hebrew Matthew, transliterated out, getting the point across, showing that the Greek language was very common in those days as well. All right, because you got to remember, the Septuagint, also another document, or, you know, the, the Old Testament was written in the Greek language called the Septuagint. Um, Masoretic text, of course, came out afterwards. Even though we know the Dead Sea Scroll, there were multiple different copies that are similar, but not exact. I have to tell you, not exact. I've, I've studied the, the Dead Sea Scrolls very much in depth. I have them on my bookshelf and behind me. I have access uh, as a, as a, as a Danun Institute has our own access to those original uh, uh, microfish film to, to study this language here, and I can assure you and attest to you there are many discrepancies compared to that of the Masoretic text, especially in certain books like the Book of Psalm. We have entire verses completely taken out uh, and some added as well, but that's a different subject, not trying to discourage anybody. We know that the Word of God is still the Word of God. All right, now, so I come back. And like I said, you know, he brings this out that, that this, the name Jesus is like this 600, uh, 660 and 6, or as we often say, 666. And we can do it all way, all kinds of ways as far as that. It's the number of a man, so therefore he's applying it to the Greek name Jesus as being the mark of the beast. You know, I've done it with the Pope of Rome, you know, the Vicarious Filii Dilii. Uh, through the Latin letters where it comes out 603 score or 666. Uh, I have, you know, there's many different ways this has been done. But it's the first time I've ever seen anybody willing to take the name of Jesus and apply that as the mark of the beast. Especially when John records there are many antichrist spirits already in the world today and they're going to quote John. Well, Jesus' name wasn't back then. 
Oh, I'm sorry. It's only the mark in this day. I forget about that. Sorry about that. Anyway, now listen, some of you are going to probably write to me and say, Steve, why didn't you talk to these guys privately? All right. I would have loved to just come to them privately had I known about this beforehand, because that's when you go to a person in private. When there is a secret sin, you are to go to that person in private, talk to them, try to win that brother back to Christ. So you men that are listening to this that made the video, I'm not here to... to I'm not here to condemn you. I pray that this will help you, that if you can just wake up to this. Look, if you want to say Yeshua, Yahushua, whatever you want to say, I have no problem with that. The name Jesus, Yeshua, is spoken in different, different ways in different languages. In fact, the very fact that you're arguing over which way to say it, Yeshua or Yahushua, tells me automatically something isn't right there either. In fact, if you go to the Nag Hammadi writings that are also considered uh, ancient scripts of, the, of uh, like, uh, uh, the different apostles that are attributed to them, they even claim that, you know, Jesus' name cannot even be pronounced uh, in, in any language. So uh, what do you deal with that, right? And then we talk about, as I said, the evolving of language. You know, there's this big issue that J was added in, and it was added in for the purpose of making Jesus. No, it was not added in for the making the name Jesus that we use today. Hebrew, by the way, has done a tremendous amount of evolving. And you might say, well, it still has 22 letters. Not necessarily. We added a lot of final letters to the language as well. Uh, and not only that, the Talmudic rabbis have added all kinds of vowels that change the sounds and meanings of words and everything else to you don't know telling what you have half the time. So it's a lot of concern that I have. But let's back up for a moment. You start off, though, as I said, you're going to say this is part of the mark of the beast. And then we're going to get started near the beginning of the video. It's part of the mark of the beast is what I'm being told, right? All right, let's take a look at what happens to those that receive the mark of the beast, right? This is in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, which you make the argument that it's in your head. You, you, you got the thought of Jesus in your head, which by the way, that word in Greek in is light right on the top, which they, can you kind of go back and forth with that too. Uh, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. Whoa. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. They have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So you're telling me that when the name of Jesus was placed back in the 15th century, all those Christians that, that learn English, people that probably, like myself, when I grew up in the English language as a little kid and God began to deal with me, Right, the first time the Lord dealt with me, believe it or not, was hearing that, seeing that little cartoon that came out in 1968. All right, I was four years old, 1968. Right, I didn't live in a Christian family. You know, I had Jewish parents that w did not practice Judaism. You know, my grandfather, because of the Holocaust, they all hid everything. Right, but anyway, they had the little thing playing on TV about the little drummer boy. And I saw that, and I still to this day it was, it can be moved by hearing that little song there where he comes to offer his gift like the wise men do, right? I'm four years old. I don't know nothing about anything, right? But I hear that, and that moved my soul. That little drummer boy, he had no gift to bring. Now, I know that's not based on anything biblical other than the fact that the wise men brought gifts to to, uh, to Jesus. And of course, I know that Jesus wasn't a baby in a manger either. He was a little boy. You know, the young child they brought it to. Why do you think Herod killed all the kids two years old and down? Right? So anyway, but to, to say, okay, what, what, if, what if I got saved and, 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 which I did get saved. I got, actually got saved at the age of eight years old. 
And the first time I ever heard his name other than in that little cartoon was at a, at a church my mother went and visited for the first time and she didn't darken the door of the church again either. All right, but it did something to me, that name of Jesus. How many people died going to their grave believing that he is the son of almighty God? Oh, I'm sorry, they received the mark of the beast. And this is what's troubling people that even write to me. As my mother, I have a sister concerned that her mother who she led to Jesus Christ is in hell. It doesn't fit the scripture. All right, for, for first off, it doesn't fit. But let's look at another premise. Let's go to the video. All right, and listen, guys, I'm not, I'm disappointed with you, yes. But I'm not angry with you. I'm, my desire is that you guys will wake up and recognize this is totally wrong. That you'll not only take the video down, but come back and, and you know, look, if you believe Yeshua or Yahushua, that this is the way it should be. All right, that this is where God is taking us to. That's fine. But there's many people that will never, ever, ever hear anything else but whatever in their native tongue was the name for Jesus. There's many people on a reservation somewhere in this United States that are Native Americans that have never heard nothing else but the name of Jesus and believed upon him and became saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. So you got to think about these things, friends. You really got to think about it. You don't want to just blast things out there, you know? And, and to speak about that, I mean, think about it. All right, look, look here. Look here in Genesis, right? I pulled Genesis up here, right? All right, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. That's the Hebrew language, right? Some people are so hung up on the Hebrew language as the divine language of God. Yes, he did choose to write the Old Testament in the Hebrew language. But the thing is, it can't be the language of creation because if it were the language of creation, you could say right now, Yahior, and there would be light. When Jesus was dying on the cross, he spoke in an unknown tongue, a tongue that none of them knew. Some of them even, they were one, we know this because they said, oh, wait a minute, maybe he's calling for Elias. Another one said, no, he's this. They didn't even know. We know they didn't know it, yet they could speak Hebrew. He wasn't speaking in Hebrew, but he was saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. He didn't say the Hebrew. They just transliterated that in there for you. But he spoke in a language that he and, the, and our Heavenly Father could understand. And he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But he wasn't saying, Eli, Eli. That's just what we, that's, they wrote it so you could understand it. No one knew what he was saying. When they come out of the upper room filled with the Holy Spirit, and all the languages were there, including Greek, Isus, and when Peter began to speak, he spoke in a language. And when he spoke in that language, his, his, his Galilean language, they all understood with their own ear in the language wherein they were born. Whether it be Greek, Asia, China, whatever you want to say it, that's what they understood it in. All right, so God's not limited because of this language barrier here. All right, so let's take a look at something here. Let's go back. I want to start here. I think it's around one minute. One minute, 50 seconds, something like that. Let's listen in. Surely, our fathers have inherited nothing but lies, worthless things in which there is no profit. Je All right, Jeremiah. He's quoting from Jeremiah. Our fathers have inherited nothing but lies. This is the same premise that is being perpetrated by Yitzhak Shapira, uh, those that follow around his teaching there, I can't, I don't know if Mark Bills has quoted that or not, but Mark also is in that same clique there, putting all Christians back underneath Talmudic rabbis. And I don't know if they're part of this group or not that are trying to crush Christianity and place the people back underneath rabbis in Israel, part of this new world order, which will, by the way, bring about the mark of the beast through combining, through bringing that AI technology and binding that with the human beings there. 
Okay, that's what they're going to do. That's what their ultimate goal is. And by the way, those of you that listen to the video, Dean Henderson, that when I had Dean on the other day, I, I, I was a little disappointed with people, even though I did the opening there to try to get you to understand. You know, I believe Jesus Christ 100%, Yeshua HaMashiach, whichever way you want to hear it, to be my own Savior. He is my Savior, my King, my God. All right? Which, by the way, I noticed in there too, that's another thing to get into in the video there, that you can't pray or worship Jesus. That is that cultic doctrine that they're bringing out. That is the New World Order agenda, is to do away with Jesus Christ being God manifested in the flesh. Even though he's, called, he's told to be called Emmanuel, God with us. Oh my goodness. Oh, Steve, don't yell. You'll make me upset. I'll have to turn the volume up and down. I'm sorry. All right. Listen, I try to be, I, th I think about you guys. I do. I, I care about those that don't like that. But, you know, there's something that moves within my heart. You know, you try being me for a little bit. My wife, she can do the eloquent speech. I can't. I'm not like that. I'm not wired like that. All right. So we have to get her in here for those of you that that, that bugs a little bit. All right. But anyway, listen to me. Uh, so he quotes Jeremiah here. Let's take a look at Jeremiah. All right? Jeremiah says that our fathers had inherited nothing but lies. Let's look at what he says. And I'm going to show you who he's talking about because I saw people like, like I said, Shapira, and uh, there's been others, uh, even uh, Tovia Singer, who have applied this scripture to the church fathers and say that Christians inherited nothing but lies. The guys on this video, they quote that scripture saying that we got the name of Jesus that was nothing but a lie. No, the language just evolved. What language doesn't? Okay? Hebrew did a lot of evolving, as we already said that. Anyway. All right. O Lord, my strength and my stronghold and my refuge, in the day of affliction unto thee shall the nations come from the ends of the earth and shall say, Our fathers have inherited naught but lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Before I get into this, all right, now watch this too. Shall a man make unto himself gods, and they are no gods? So people like Tovia Singer quote this. I've listened to Tovia. You know, me and Tovia correspond back and forth from time to time. And Tovia spews the same kind of lies out of his own mouth. But, you know, I have respect for him for one thing. He believes, he's a Jew, and he don't, he's not sitting there trying to be a, pretend to be a Christian. All right, he said the Gentiles are going to come say that they've inherited nothing but lies. They inherited. Where do you get your inheritance from? From your fathers. Who are the fathers of Christianity? Oh, the Jews, right? Shall a man make unto himself gods and there are no gods? Well, you might say, no, Steve, no, 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 no. He's actually prophesying about the church fathers. Let's see. Let's see. That's okay. People make that boast. Let's see what Jeremiah is actually talking about then. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 2. Thou shalt not take thee a wife, neither shalt thou have sons or daughters in this place. What? He's not allowed to take a wife. He's not even allowed to have kids with, this, with, with Israel and his, among his own people. Why? For thus saith the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place and concerning their mothers that bore them and concerning their fathers that begot them in this land, they shall die of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented. That sounds a lot like what happened before the flood. Oh, maybe we forget, lest we continue on without considering this, Psalm 106. David says in verse 35, But mingled themselves with the nations, the goim, and learned their works, and they served their idols, which became a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto demons. They mingled themselves. That's the same as mingling their seed, all right? In case you don't believe it, it's also written in the book of Isaiah chapter 57, 
Let me just see if I have that in here. Yeah, I do. Okay. Das in oh wait a minute. No, 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 no. Different issue. I'll, I'll come back to that later. All right. So anyway, so Jeremiah, let's go back to Jeremiah. Okay, we're back in Jeremiah, is that right? Oop, wait a minute, wrong Jeremiah. Oop, let me pull it back up so I don't lose that spot. We gotta come back to that in a minute. All right, so Jeremiah, they die those grievous deaths. For I have taken away my peace from this people. Hmm. But I'm, I highlighted things just to kind of save time. Both the great and small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried, neither shall men lament for them. Neither shall men break bread for them in mourning to comfort them for the dead. Drop down to verse 9. Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place before your eyes, and in your days, what? The voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. Whoa. Do you know where that's also written at? It's written in the book of Revelation. Okay, book of Revelation, uh, not chapter 14, I apologize, but chapter 18. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in you, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in you. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth, Israel. God totally, through the prophets, put the blood of the prophets. Jesus put it himself. Jesus said, remember what he said that one time when he's talking to the Pharisees? He said that the righteous bloodshed of all the prophets, okay, Oh wow, let's let's we're gonna have to do that one because I didn't pull that one up. Let's put it in here. All right. Righteous blood prophets. All right, hang on. Here we go. I think it's Matthew 23 30 here. Let me just see if this is the right one. One to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers. I better put that on the screen. You guys can see that better. 23. All right. Because when I'm just doing it in the online thing there, you don't see that nearly as good. Matthew 23. And what verse were we at here? We'll start it off verse 30. All right, so let's go back just to make it go a little faster. 30, doop, here we go. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up in the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Wow. That's where Isaiah 57 comes into play, actually. See, he calls them serpents, right? Thou hast enlarged thy bed and chosen thee of them whose bed thou lovest, whose hand thou saw, uh, sawest. Hmm. Chose your bed. And thou wentest to the king with ointment and didst increase thy perfumes and didst send thine own ambassadors afar off even down to the netherworld. There you go. Adultery. Adultery. Even the Bible says there's the sons of adulterers. You look at the video. I've got, let's see, where is it at? You want to, uh, not that one there. Here we go. This video right here, reptilian race identified. You want to know the truth about those things that went on? Check it, check it out right there. But mingle, with them, mingle themselves with the nations and learn their works. It's on that screen right there. Anyway, I'm kind of ranting right now. I'm just kind of irritated as I think about these things here. So they use Jeremiah, uh, using Jeremiah chapter 16. So let's continue on in Jeremiah 16. Behold, I will cause to cease, okay, uh, the voice of the bride and the bridegroom. In Revelation, we see that as well. Now, God is going to bring them back, though. He does, in the same chapter. Wherefore, hath the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us, or what is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our God? Even the Nephilim was wondering what they were doing wrong. 
Then shalt thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after what other gods? And have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. He just said it. Gods, plural. Right? Right there. Right there. Okay? Ve'elachu achre Elohim. Achreim. You have walked after other gods. All right, remember what he said down there? You make that, shall a man make unto himself gods that are there are no gods? Who was guilty? This isn't the Christians. This is the Jews. All right, and we can say Jews because it was the tribe of Judah. It was during the time when uh, the house of Israel had already been dispersed for their sins. Same thing. Idolatry bringing in all that kind of ungodliness, Dan being the guilty of them all. You know, no wonder why his father said his door would be that of a serpent. Oh my goodness. Your father should forsaken me, and saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. And they blame all this on the, on the Christians. Just like these guys do in their video. Therefore will I, will I cast you out of this land and into a land that you have not known, neither you nor your fathers, and there shall you serve other gods day and night. That's when they went to Babylon. And not only do they serve other gods, but that's also when they, the priests take and mingle their seed with the peoples of the lands and brought the Nephilim race into the priesthood. Oh my goodness, what a mess it ended up being. Get down to verse 15. I will bring them back into their land that I have gave unto their fathers. This ain't talking about modern days. No. This was talking about after the Babylonian exile. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. All right? Now that is the apostles. That's the apostles. Why? Because the apostles were fishermen. And Jesus did send them out. And what did he say to them? Go to what? Only the lost sheep of what? The house of Israel. Where, where were they? Dispersed throughout the land. So on the day of Pentecost, when they were all gathered there, and the ones that were in the upper room came out, all filled with the Spirit of God, all these, and it doesn't say Jews, it's Judeans, that were gathered there from all the different lands wherein they were what? Born. They weren't born in Judea. But they were Judeans because by ancestry they were Israelites. And they were known as Judeans because of the land of Judea. Because now it was called Judea. And they're back there. And this is where the prophecy of Zechariah is fulfilled. They will take a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Actually, the hold of a skirt of a... Ooh, let's, let's look at that real quick because I know you, most of you guys know this. But there's going to be people watching this and they ain't going to have the foggiest idea what I'm talking about. All right, so Zechariah, Zechariah 8, right? There's another one they like to quote. I used to, I used to be wrong on this too, so I understand. Yes, many mighty nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem. Whoa, way messed up, Steve. Go way down, there we go. Uh, in Jerusalem, and entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. All right. Let me do it like this here. All right. Now, I got, I got to clarify a few things here so you can understand this. Okay. All right. Now, maybe that's good enough. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take a hold out of all the languages of the nations, shall even take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, Yish Yehudi, a Jewish man, singular, one Jewish man. That's, that was Jesus, Yeshua. Okay? That's who that was. All right? Saying, Le mord, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. All right, now that is in the plural there. I agree. That right there, imchem, with you. Who's the with you there? That's on the day of Pentecost. When they took a hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, 
We actually find that written in the Gospels. Jesus is up there in the Galilee, and they came and they said, if we could only touch the you know, hem of his garment like the, like the woman had the blood issue, but they just wanted to touch him. And he allowed them, and many of them were healed. Okay? They took a hold, and what was it? Syrians. You argue about the Golan Heights and say it's part of Israel. Not according to the Bible it isn't. Not according to the New Testament. Not even according to the book of Isaiah it wasn't. The Golan Heights was part of Syria. Oh my goodness. What a mess we've gotten ourselves into. So anyway, Jeremiah 16. So he sends for many fishermen. Well, he had his apostles, they went out, and they were there, and when they took all that Jewish men, they said, we hear God is with you. That's what we find out in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. They said, we're, we're, you know, they wanted to know what's going on. Of course, Pharisees said, no, these guys are full of new wine. Don't listen to anything they got to say. Wow. What a mess this has turned into. So, so he, uses, uh, he uses Jeremiah 16, uh, to, to kind of justify what he's saying. And he, he does say they're going to come back. Neither is their iniquity concealed from mine eyes. And I will first recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have profaned my land. They have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of the detestable things and their abominations. That's when they had... See, what? notice that too. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face. Neither is their iniquity concealed from mine eyes. Now this is when he's already said he's going to bring them back. All right? He says, I first will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. And Jesus did. He called them out for what they had done. Because they have profaned my land, they have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable things and their abominations. Wow. You want to know what that is? That was when the priest had taken according to the book of Ezra. You want to see it? That's for these guys that are listening. Maybe they'll come listen. Maybe and I just pray. I pray you guys, I pray God will open your eyes. Please open your eyes and see what the truth is. Ezra chapter 9, right? Uh, nope, sorry, Nehemiah. Let's get into Ezra. Right? For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves. See? Holy seed, right there. Zarah HaKodesh, the holy seed, Be'ami Ha'arotzot, okay, of the peoples of the land, and they mingled themselves, right here, Vehita Arabu, by the word Arab, is just like the same word they use for Arab. All right, it's the same word. It's a mingled, and that's because, and, and that's kind of sad because the, the the Jewish people apply that to all the people in the Middle East that they're all Arabs. No, they're not. Just because a person is an Arab doesn't mean that they're a mingled seed. In fact, if anything, you could put that on a lot of the Levites today that they are Arabs. They are the mingled seed because the scripture says so. Ezra said they were. Oh, they divorced the women. They divorced them. Don't worry. They got them away. No, they ended up overthrowing the priesthood, the true Zadokites that didn't get mixed up in that mess. They overthrew that, took over the whole thing. That's why Jesus calls them a bunch of serpents. So anyway, so he says that their carcasses have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable things and their abominations. Yeah. You put that Nephilim bloodline inside of the priesthood. That's what he's talking about. Oh Lord, my strength and my strong heart and my refuge, the day of affliction to thee shall the nations come from the ends of the earth and shall say, Our fathers have inherited not but lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. You want to know what the not of lies are? Things like this right here. Talmudic lies. Because that false, detestable seed that got mingled in there brought us the Talmud. All right? And corrupted the way of God. You don't believe that? Let me show you what Jeremiah says. Right? Besides Jeremiah 16, let's look at Jeremiah chapter, uh, what is it? Chapter 8, I believe. Yeah, chapter 8, verse 8. How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Now they translate this, Lo, certainly in vain hath wrought the vain pen of the scribes. It doesn't say that, all right? You could, vain, vain is just not a good word, okay? Ve torot Yehovah etanu 
okay? And the Torah of Jehovah is with us, all right? You know, Achin hineni la shakir ose. Wow. So behold, for a, you know, this is done for a lie. Eight shakir safarin. The lying pen of the writers or the scribes. Hmm. He calls the, 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 the scribes a bunch of liars. Now, how does their pen become how does the eighth become a lie? How does their pen become a lie? Is it maybe because they start putting all these little vowel points in here? That could be one way. Talmudic, that could be another way. Line pin of the scribes. What a mess. All right, let's continue on. I've only got, we didn't know tell how long this video is going to be, my goodness. All right, so we just we got to 2 minutes and 40 seconds here. Let's go to 457 in this video. This is the other gentleman going to be speaking, not the picture of the guy, but I don't think it is, but what he says. Of you that do watch this in its entirety, will be exposed to a truth like never before. A few of you will already know this. A second group of you will be exposed to this for the first time. With that being said, I must warn you, this teaching is not for the faint of heart, nor is it for those who are on unstable foundations. Okay. Uh, no. I don't agree with him there. Let me, okay, here's where I want to get. 1 John 2.18 and 22. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Yeshua is the Messiah? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And every spirit that confesseth not the Yeshua Messiah is come in the flesh is not of Elohim. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. All right, so we already have a problem right there. Because these two guys that are a part of this video, neither one of them agree with which way to say the name. Is it Yeshua or Yahushua? Nobody seems to know, do they? What about all the other languages in the world in the way that his name would be pronounced? But in Hebrew, they can't agree on which Hebrew version of the name of Jesus would they give him, Yeshua or Yahushua. So they fight over that for a while. Uh, then some say it's not Yeshua or Yahushua, but it's Yahshua. Boy, now we have three different variations of what it should be, and it's not Yahushua, but it's Yahushua. Now we have four different names in the Hebrew language of what we should be saying, and so therefore, if you take what John says, and you take that literally, and you don't confess that Yeshua or Yahushua or Yeshua or Yahshua, which one are we supposed to say? And if you don't do it that way, you're the Antichrist. Well, maybe you're missing the whole point of what John wrote in the first place. So let's take a look at what John did say. John answered and said, a man, um, wait a minute. Not that John, hang on. Got to get to the right one that I want you to be able to see here. And maybe it's in Matthew and not John. No, it's actually near the beginning here. Here we go. Uh, John says right here in chapter 8, verse 24, I said, there, let me back up to verse 23. And he said unto them, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. All right, now let me, let's back up a little further. Maybe I need to highlight a little bit of this for you guys. Let's just kind of start highlighting something here just so we get this to where you guys can see it a little bit better. Okay, let me see. Okay, and we'll set the stage for you. 
All right. So the Pharisees are coming to Jesus. Says, then, then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way and you shall seek me and shall die in your sins. He's talking to the Pharisees, right? Whether I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself because he said, whether I go, you cannot come. They think that's the unpardonable sin. And he said unto them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. Now, he doesn't even say the word he. They italicize that. Except that you believe that I am. Ihaye. This is what, when Moses said to, to, to uh, let me just show you real quick. All right. That's in Exodus 3, um, Exodus chapter 3, I believe. Okay. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> All right. The Yomer Moshe El Ha Elohim, and Moses said unto God, Hineni Anochi Ba El Bene Yisrael, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, Veamati Lehem Elohai Otechem, the God of your, let's see, they shall say unto them, Shelachani, the Yomati El Lehem Elohai Avotechem, Shelachani El Yachem, Veamuli Mashemo, Ma Omer. Alehem. All right. He's saying, you know, when I come to them and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And, uh, you know, they will ask me, Mashima, what is his name? Maomer uh, Alehem. What do I say to them? Ve'yomer Elohim el Moshe. And then God said to Moses, Ihaye asha, Ihaye ve'yomer kotavar levne Yisrael, Ihaye. Uh, all right, I am has sent you. So when Jesus says over here, right, he says to them, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. So when he's talking about this in this video here, that it's the spirit of Antichrist, all those that don't confess that Yeshua. Hamashiach or Jesus Christ has come into the flesh that that is the spirit of Antichrist that's what that's what John is speaking about there Jesus he's quoting Jesus and he's telling them all right you know he's showing them in other words except that you believe that I am that I am now here that I am is here in your presence that Yeshua the salvation is present among you you will die in your sin because why it is the spirit of Antichrist. All right? Now we know Antichristo is that of like Christ, but it can also be opposite. But the thing is here, it's the spirit of Antichrist because Antichrist, now he rejects the true I am and he's looking for something else. That's why they can't confess that he is the one. They want some other Messiah. That's this whole premise of today. They're looking for another Messiah. Israel's getting ready for, oh, the coming of Messiah is coming. Christians are saying it's going to be Jesus. But no, the Messianics say, get rid of Jesus. Just like these guys are saying, get rid of Jesus. It's not Jesus, it's somebody else. And they got some out there saying, no, it's the serpent Messiah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm blown away by all this. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself of all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. It is most important that we realize what is really being said here. In verse 4, Paul tells us that the Antichrist will sit in the 
temple of God. It is God's temple that he sits in, not man's, God's. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Those are that's yeah, correct. Also know that all scripture must agree. Scripture teaches us that Elohim will not dwell in a temple built by man's hands. We are the temple of God. John told us that the Antichrist is spirit. Both Paul and Peter tell us that we are the spiritual temple. If the Jews build a third temple, and they might, it will not be God's temple. There's not even a high priest to run the temple. Our high priest is Yeshua. Paul makes it very clear that the Antichrist sits in God's temple, not a false temple. Paul explains to us that the anti-Messiah will exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he imitates God. If what Paul said was the truth, I believe it is. He just told us that a spirit of Antichrist will sit in our spiritual temple as an imposter of God. All right. Now, I agree 100%. Satan will sit in the temple of God. And I have also taught that quite extensively myself. It will be through technology. It will be through Satan getting a hold of the, well, the AI serpent coming down, making himself one with humanity. Now, he's going to get into this, and he's going to go into this, what he calls revealing the Antichrist. And I want you to think about it when he does this, though, okay? Well, watch this. I'm going to fast forward now to the 20 minute mark here. And uh, what you're going to get into when you're watching this video, the, the, he goes into a very long, tedious process to listen to. But the, the premise behind this is that all the ideas that people have come up with, the microchip in the hand, uh, or some kind of barcode or tattoo, or something implanted underneath the skin, that this is all wrong because the Hebrew is, or excuse me, the Greek here is on the hand or on the head, not in, not planted underneath. Which is kind of, uh, it's, it's, when he says that though, that actually is contradictory to what he's saying because he's then going to tell you that the name Jesus is in our head. Uh, we think of the name Jesus in our hand. By our hand, we do the action of carrying out the works of Jesus. And of course, the whole idea behind this too is that the Antichrist, it's the name of the Antichrist and it's a man. It is something that is opposite to the real. The only problem is the name Jesus is not a man and the name Jesus is not what's given to the beast itself. The beast has a mark and there is, you could have the mark or the name or the number of his name. So, but nonetheless, he still makes the argument that that's the way that goes. But one major mistake that's going to be made here is when he defines the word blasphemous name. And that's what I want to get to. It's around 2040 uh, that we're going to get into this, but we're going to, so we're going to play this at 2003 so you can kind of catch the thought that he's saying here before we go into this part about the blasphemous name. Let's listen into this. Telling us that the mark of the beast is his name, just as the mark of Elohim is his name. Again, Revelation 13, 1. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. The word blasphemous is defined as sacrilegious against Elohim, or sacred things, or better yet, profane. So this name is against Elohim, 
or sacred things and is profane. Revelation 13. Okay. To profane God's name, uh, he's saying that the name Jesus has profaned the name of God. All right, and so we have to take seriously and look at the scriptures though, when we're talking about profaning the name of God because it has nothing to do with saying the name of Jesus. In fact, if you take, we'll go to Ezekiel. And it's kind of funny because Mark Biltz actually uh, quoted on one of his videos there with uh, Yitzhak Shapira, the very revelation God originally gave me about uh, the profaning of the name of God, but I had never got the full revelation until just recently. So let me share with you here though what really is profaning the name of God. And we find this in Ezekiel chapter 36 and I'm going to back up here. Let me just see. I think we're going to start at verse 18 but let me just make sure I didn't mark something else. Nope. Okay. Let's go to verse 18. Wherefore I poured out my fury upon them for the blood which they had shed upon the land. God's talking about the Israelites. Okay. And because they had defiled it with their what? Idols. Hmm. You know, they always say that Christians need the seven Noah, or Gentiles need the seven Noahide laws. Well, it seems the biggest idolaters were the Israelites. And I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way, and according to their doings I judged them. Verse 20, And when they came into the nations, whether they came, they profaned my holy name. I don't think they were saying the name of Jesus. Okay, so let's see what they did. And that men said of them, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. And I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations, whither they came. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I'll, I do not this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations. Well, how did Israel profane the name of God among the nations? I used to think when I first got the revelation, it was just the fact that they had left the land of Israel, totally forgetting that they left the land of Israel for a reason. Their sins caused that. And God brings them back to the land not because of what, but for their sake, but for his own name's sake, all right? Let me show you, though, what profaning the name really is. In Amos, right? This is why I also typed that originally when Jesus did the famous Lord's Prayer. You know, he says to his apostles, pray like this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, sanctify thy name. Well, how did God's name get unsanctified? I just took it for the face value. What I saw in Ezekiel it was because they were no longer in the land. Not remembering that they were thrown out of the land because of their sins. What the question is, is what was the sin? Amos. In the book of Amos, we find here chapter 2, Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel, yea, for four, I will not reverse it, because they sell the righteous for silver, the needy for a pair of shoes, that pant after the dust of the earth and head of the poor, and turn aside the way of the humble. And a man and his father go into the same maid to profane my holy name. Oh, wow. Mingling the seed. You go into a maid. See, she's not a virgin, just a maid. Some other woman of another nation to profane my holy name. And how do they profane the holy name? Just like it says in Psalm 106. But mingled themselves with the nations and learned their works and they served their idols which became a snare to them. What did God say to the children of Israel? Let me remind you. It's a sexual sin. We find this in Leviticus, right? We find this in Leviticus chapter 18. Remember, because even when God goes down in Joshua, when he goes as part of one of the spies, and I think it's in Deuteronomy 18. I'll bring that one out as well. Let's go ahead and pull up Deuteronomy 18 so you understand this. For those of you that never heard this message before, in Deuteronomy chapter 18 here, we find the same thing uh, that they are told not to learn to do after the, the evils of this land here, right? Uh, 
Okay, because of the, I'm dropping them out from the before. Okay, yeah, here we go, right here. Right here, verse, let me just kind of highlight some of this for you so you can see this. Therefore shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, one that useth divination, a soothsayer, enchanter, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, one that consulteth a ghost or a familiar spirit or a necromancer. For whosoever doeth these things is an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God is driving them out from before thee. That's how they got the giants in the land. And I don't have time. I can't just zap it up on the screen for you from the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls show you the exact same thing. The Dead Sea Scrolls show you that they were using these, this, this evil that you're seeing here in order to mingle their seed, the Levites were, over while they were in Babylon. Now, in Leviticus, we go to Leviticus. Let's get around chapter or verse 20. Whoops, sorry. Are we in Leviticus? Uh, got to make sure I'm in the right book. Leviticus. Oh, we got to go to chapter 18. All right, we'll go down to around verse 20. All right. Now, I'll start with verse 20. Everything in Leviticus is about sexual sin. Okay? And this is why you need to know this. Just to do a little bit before and a little bit after, let's look at this. All right? And thou shalt not lay carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not give any of thy seed to set them apart to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lay with a mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. So setting their seed apart to Molech, when he talks about it over in Deuteronomy, passing their seed through the fire to Molech, which by the way, comes from one of the names of the fallen angels there, is how they brought the Nephilim back into this world. Look it up for yourself, all right? Those of you who think, oh, Nephilim were only during the times of Enoch, and that's not right, the book of Enoch is all false. Okay, get rid of that garbage out of your head. Go read it in Genesis chapter 6. It says Nephilim in Hebrew. Go read it over in uh, uh, Numbers 13, 33. Nephilim. In fact, Enoch, not Enoch, but Enoch, was, his father was a, Nephilim, a fallen angel, and his sons were Nephilim. Wow, what do you know? So anyway, so what do we do? We get way over here in Ezekiel there. We find out they profane the name. How do they profane their name? When their fathers go into the sun made to profane my holy name. When you mingle the seed, that's the profaning of the name. Not this nonsense that their guys are telling you over here because you take the name of Jesus instead of Yeshua. That's not profaning God's name. And if you can't make up your mind which name it is in Hebrew, then which one are you profaning the name of God? What are the people to believe? Oh, is it Yahushua? No, it's Yahshua. No, it's not Yahshua, it's Yeshua. And, you know, I believe Yeshua much better than I believe Yahshua, because why? Ihaye, and he is the I am. Ye, the Yeshua. So if you're going to take a Hebrew name, that's what I would prefer to use myself, because he claims that he was the I am, and I believe Jesus. All right, so let's just settle that. All right, so let's move on then. So that's how, in order for God to fix his holy name and get rid of the name that had been profaned, and it's so hard to find, i got so many up here, right? He brings them back, not for their sake, but for his holy name's sake, right? You have profaned among the nations, whether, whether you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And how did they do it? They were always having sex with all these Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Amorites, all of those nations that were mixed in, mingled with other seeds. And that's over and over and over. For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. And I will what? Sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. That's when John was doing the baptismal in the river there, making ready for the Mashiach. That's what Jeremiah goes into when he says, I'm going to return you back. All right, that was being fulfilled already. Then he says, what a new heart also will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. All right, that new heart, that's the Holy Spirit. So if you're saying that Jesus inside of you is an antichrist or an anti-type, how can it be an antichrist of the Holy Spirit? I agree. 
Satan wants to sit in the temple of God and be worshipped as if he were God. But he has no way to be inside of you like the Holy Spirit unless he puts nanoparticles in you, puts a chip in you, or gets 5G technology and, does, and controls you in that manner. A name is not an antichristo. It is not, period, no way, can't be, never will be. So the Chizu that you're trying to say, you might as well get your Cheetos and eat it with it because it's all false, all right? Plain and simple. Ah, wow. Now, here's a kicker too. Let me go back to the video here. Let's go to 29. I'll skip over some of these things. We already did the, the Cheeto part, so let's go now to the 29. All right, or cheese part, you could say there, 29. This is what really kind of clinches it for me because it lets me know it could be an agenda. I hope the guys, they, they didn't have an agenda, but let's just see. They call this the Antichrist checklist, right? Who supposedly, watch this, ended the law, who ended Sabbath, they say Jesus, who ended feast days, Jesus, who imagine, imagine Image is worship, Jesus. Who sits in the most people's temples, they say Jesus does. Who do Christians worship as God, Jesus. Whose name is in their thoughts, foreheads, they say Jesus. Whose name do they work through, right hand, Jesus. Blessed be to God for those that love Jesus. Who has replaced Yeshua, Jesus. That is false. If you say that, then all the other names on the entire planet that they use the name of Jesus. And I think I actually had some of these out here. Let me just see. No. No. Where is it at? Where do I have that at? No. I don't know where it's at now. Anyway, all the different languages that the name Jesus is pronounced in. I guess all these guys are going to hell? Or it's just the people that use the letter J? I don't know how much further we should go. They get into Gematria as well. Oh, Gematria. What a mess. Let's listen to that nonsense too. Everything had a dualistic meaning to it. So in, in numbers through Gematria, we find that the numbers also have an alphabetical equivalent in the Greek language that the New Testament was written in. Gematria was also something that was used by the Hebrews and most likely the Phoenicians as well. Uh, so what all right just quickly to let you know about when it comes to gametria all right gametria is borrowed from the egyptians the greeks borrowed it from the egyptians the greek language did not have a numeric system with their letters originally they borrowed it from the egyptians and of course the hebrews also did not have that either they borrowed it from the greeks hmm. all right let's see though uh, and of course, as I said to you, they did differ as far as which name should be said. Let me just play that for you so you're aware of that uh, little issue there. God is Zeus as well. The only thing I would like to point out is that Michael and I do have a difference of opinion on the pronunciation. Okay, Michael the is the other guy. I've been led to call upon him as Yahusha, whereas he pronounces it Yeshua. There is a term that is greatly overused in the church these days what believers often will will say when something comes up and they use this as an excuse that God knows my heart I will say that while it be while it is overused uh, no sense even going there all right um, hmm. I, I think you guys kind of get the gist of this and there's no sense in me keep continuing to, to pound on this you can listen to this all you want uh, I, I consider it a very dangerous video. I, I really do. And I don't know if these, like I said, these guys, um, Michael, and I think it's Adam is the other guy's name here. Uh, I don't think the guys, I hope they, yeah, Adam. Uh, I don't think they mean bad by what they're trying to do. I think they, they, they got excited. They believe that this is something that's correct. Uh, and they went down this route here. So I would say pray for them. Uh, because it's a very, very dangerous video, and it has caused a lot of people to panic as a result of that. Uh, and also, let me just, there's another thing I want to, I do need to point out, though, before closing on this. This is at the 41-minute mark here. Uh, and again, this is also kind of uh, hypocritical, uh, because there they sit there and they're claiming here that the name Jesus is uh, the mark of the beast. But then posts 
King James Version Bible, read from it as their source scripture. Uh, and although he does say Yahushua is, is for himself, but he clearly has the name Jesus, which is supposed to be an Antichrist thing. So he's projecting it into their mind. So everybody that watches the video that got projected Jesus in the mind, does that mean you took the mark of the beast? And don't give me the excuse that you can't, uh, you don't have a source for using the name Jesus uh, that is not Jesus, because like, for example, right here, and this is on uh, the scriptures, you have Yahusha right there. It's written on the page there. Uh, the Sefer also, and the Sefer is also available online uh, that uses these versions of the name as well. So why would you use it like this? Listen. Uh, the laws for the Jews, well, Paul uh, actually cleared this up for us very well. Galatians 3, 27 through 29. For as many of you has been baptized into Messiah, have put on Messiah. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Messiah Yahusha. And if you be Messiahs, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the... So, I, I, that's why I say, it's kind of a hypocritical thing to sit there and tell you that this is the Antichrist spirit, and then you put that inside the film as well. Um, and then, uh, let me, one more thing here, in the first... 43rd second here, I forget exactly, but let me just look and see what this was starting about. to see here, we see that the um, the foolish did not have oil with them. They did not have the the, the pressing of the oil, This is the, the keeping of the commandments. Uh, we'll actually see a couple other verses of what I believe that oil means, and I do believe it's uh, the keeping of the commandments. While the, let's see, so, but, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us... Okay, it would be a little bit more in length to get into this issue here, so I'll save that for another time uh, as far as that. But it is taking people back into the law. Uh, and I do believe in the commandments. I believe in the Ten Commandments. I believe that those are something that... Uh, is placed within our heart. It's not something that is no longer, it's, it shouldn't be in, you know, uh, as far as, well, let's put it like this here. He said he would put his laws within your heart. So you know within your heart that thou shalt not murder. You know not to cover your neighbor's wife. Uh, in fact, he's made it a little bit more stringent. If you look upon a woman to lust after, you've committed adultery with her already within your heart. All right, so those are commands that are within our heart that are written on the tables of our heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Those are his commandments. And by the way, love your neighbor as yourself is not one of the Ten Commandments. That is actually spoken by Moses. Uh, that's not even considered, I don't even think it's considered a Levitical. Well, the Jews say that it's only to, to Jews that that applies. But anyway, these are the things that uh, also can be looked at as well. A lot of information. There's a lot of things I kind of skipped over because I knew this was very lengthy and I apologize for the, the length of this, but it needed to be addressed. And if you know these guys here, listen, pray for them that God will help open their eyes to this. It's really false. Uh, I, I'm sorry if this is something that has hurt you. If you're believing this, I sincerely ask you, you need to pray about this and reconsider uh, what's been said here uh, because it's completely taking you down a very dangerous path. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.